here at as do your seminar about Africa, about uh, opening business in Africa, and I want to introduce you Chansey Chanda. This is this guy. As you see, he's from Norway. <laughs> no, he isn't from Norway. Uh, he is from Zambia. So, Chansey, what are you doing in Zambia? In Zambia, mainly I'm uh, promoting free market and capitalism, trying to establish the education system, trying to provide uh, a platform where people can learn what free market is all about, because uh, that is the solution to poverty. It's uh, giving people the freedom they need to trade. So basically, that's my major, major activities to provide free market education. And I also practice my own business. I cannot teach business if I'm not in business. Yeah, exactly. What am I going to teach? Okay, yeah. so what kind of business you have or you had in, Afri in uh, Zambia? Uh, right now, I have uh, fish farming. I'm developing a fish farm uh, project. Wow, fish farming in Zambia? Yes. In Africa, because a lot of uh, people think that Africa is big desert. So how, how no. you can produce fish there? There's Come plenty on. of water. Actually, Zambia, they say uh, a, a big portion of um, water is in Zambia. So we, we have a lot of water. There are plenty of it. And um, the school itself, I'm running it also as a business uh, to teach uh, free market education. And I'm entering into other areas of agriculture. Uh, I just acquired uh, pieces of land for me to start um, farming. So I'm doing agriculture, fish farming, plus other things that I'll be doing. And I'm also in uh, education. OK. Yes. Uh, so there is plenty of water. So why uh, people in the old world think that we must build, build wells in Africa? We also, with Father Jacek, try to build small water supply company, but the go government said, no, nah, it is a monopoly for us, only we can uh, sell the water. So, so, yeah. so why the, the people in Zambia don't, don't, don't have well? Well, well uh, the resources, the natural resources are there, the people are there, but uh, we need to do that primarily because uh, Zambia is not uh, as developed as other people. You don't have uh, running water in every house, for example. You have uh, a lot of people who go but to... why? Well, because um, development is uh, growing slowly. Um, we have a mono monopoly of, uh, for example, water suppliers. There is only one company that supplies water. Uh, there is only one uh, company that supplies electricity. And those... Supplies or not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> And, and those are government-owned companies. Like now, they are inviting the private sector to join the energy supply by producing your electricity. You sell it to the company. The company distributes. The government company distributes. So we are yet to um, come to the understanding that we need private sector in some of these areas, such as uh, water supply, and electricity supply. The fear is if business people come on board, they'll be charging too much for water. They'll be charging too much for electricity. But let's face it, which is better? Water that you pay a little bit high or without water? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, I would rather pay water a little bit more. I have it because that is life than uh, not having water at all because not having water at all in the name of keeping it cheap it kills people when people have no access to water i mean you call on uh, diseases so it's a matter of understanding the logic which is better because in economics the question is where are you better off are you better off with water that you pay a little bit more or you are better off with uh, cheap water that you cannot even access. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, this is typical in the socialist-minded, yes. uh, oriented yes. uh, government. They want, okay. uh, they want uh, inexpensive things, but poor quality. That's, that's the problem. Okay, so you, you are free market oriented, you are a capitalist, so uh, 
uh, the main question is why you won't abuse so many poor people in Zambia? Because you're a capitalist, so you must abuse poor people. It is wrong. Capitalists uh, don't abuse people. Capitalists have a social agenda because a capitalist look at the needs of the people. For example, I see that uh, there is no water. As a capitalist, I put resources together to start supplying water to the people. A capitalist is not greedy. A capitalist does not exploit people. That is uh, a socialist propaganda. But again, a capitalist is uh, socially driven. A capitalist has this social agenda as a concern for society to solve so society's problems so that people's lives can improve. Now, what is wrong with that? Because that's what a capitalist does. I don't know. I just want you know, to yeah. ask some funny so, questions. So, so I, I've told people that I'm a capitalist. I promote free market. And I will die for capitalism. How, how they react? I haven't had anybody challenging me because what I talk about is real experience. That's what people need. There is this universal cry for better life. There is this universal hunger for freedom. And uh, inwardly, everybody, including the socialist, inwardly he cries for freedom, outwardly he's hypocrites, he's mistreating people. So, so everybody cries for freedom. Everyone wants a better life. Now, under socialism, I mean, you, you want things for free, how will you continue? How many free things have continued forever? At some point, they will run out of resources and they will discontinue the program, which is very bad. You don't want to introduce people to something that you cannot continue supplying because business should be a social contract. I'm in business, I have to be committed to supplying the needs of the people because I'm driven by meeting the needs of the people. And that's how capitalists make tons of money because they, make, they meet the needs of the people. Okay, but now we speaking about Zambia because you are from Zambia. And what, what can you say about the political situation in Zambia? It's uh, moving right or moving left, moving to free market or moving to socialist oriented country because when the uh, people in po people in po people in Poland uh, thinking about Africa so that they, they thinking why uh, so many people kill each other yeah yes yeah, so, so, so what what is the situation in Zambia now well in Zambia the situation is very good we are happy because uh, we are moving towards a free market we are trying our best to establish free markets, we still have some policymakers who have not understood what free market is all about in the capitalism. But uh, as a, a general economic trend right now, we are a free market country. Uh, we have allowed uh, a lot of uh, people to come on board. A lot of uh, uh, sectors have been liberalized. Energy, um, education, uh, health. So, so, so you, you are saying that if I won't invest in Zambia, I can even even build my own, own power plant? Yes, you can build your own power plant. And in you, Poland I can, yeah, in without Z license. So. In, in, in Zambia, of course you need a license in Zambia, but you can have your own power plant that you can generate power. Then you sell to, the yeah. government is going to buy from you as a, a private uh, investor. You can set, for example, a, a solar panel plant where you are generating power using solar. Then you are going to sell to this uh, company uh, by government that is going to be distributing because it has the infrastructure for distribution. So people can do that. And people at a small scale they are also investing in solar energy. So you can have your entire house connected to, for example, um, solar system without being connected to, to yeah. this uh, company. So we are moving free market and we are happy. Unfortunately, we're not. 
you should join uh, our train. <laughs> so maybe you should teach us how to, uh, you know, uh, how to change this political situation because we, I think most entrepreneurs from Poland will want to move to the right, not to the left. Yes, everybody has to move to the right. Everybody has to go free market because there is no better and efficient system that uh, creates wealth besides free market. Listen, creativity is not in the structure. Creativity is in the brain. Creativity is in the person. And that's the foundation of free market. Give people the freedom they have and they need to exercise their creative power. And you'll be amazed what individuals can uh, invent. You'll be amazed how much individuals can create. There is no creativity. There is no wealth creation in the structure. If anything at all, in the structure, what you have is fighting, quarreling, disagreement, no commitment, because no one is responsible for something. And the private sector, you know that your private property is the only source of income. You are going to take care of it. You are going to protect it. You make sure it gives you the best for your life. So socialism will never give the quality of life that capitalism gives. And we have seen it. You show me one socialist country that has the quality of life the same as a capitalist nation. They used to say that, that Sweden or Norway. That is at the government level, but the people inside are poor. You can have a country that has got an airline, they have uh, the trains, they have all these for the nation, but individual lives are poor. We are not interested with a government that is rich and the people who are poor. We are interested in the people who are rich with a better quality of life. Exactly, so free market and sometimes, to, and, uh, and magic will, will happen. Uh, okay, okay, next question is because we sent to Africa a lot of volunteers yes. uh, who helped build uh, schools there, yes. and mostly parents or friends of uh, those volunteers uh, ask them, why you go there? There is a war in Africa. Yeah. So well, what can you say about uh, I don't know, war situation in Zambia? Yeah. <laughs> because people don't understand that yes. there, Zambia is a very peaceful place, I, I think. Uh, uh, it, it all starts with uh, not knowing the geography of Africa. When people think about Africa, they think of one country. And when they Which one? They, well, they think Africa is one country, oh, one oh, president. Okay. Oh, okay, okay. They don't know that uh, Africa is many countries, many presidents. They think of Africa as one country. So when they hear, for example, the war in this country, they will think it's the entire Africa fighting. Even when in a country there is war, sometimes it is one part of the country, not the whole country. So they, there are many peaceful countries in Africa. It's that... Uh, not knowing and not understanding the geography. But at the same time, Zambia specifically, we have grown and we are, I, hey, I can tell you, I am proud to be a Zambian because the transition of power, when we transit from one uh, political party to the other, we do it so smoothly in a mature way. I've never been proud to be a Zambian before, especially when it comes to political transitions. Uh, or if you compare to Zimbabwe. We have had yeah. peace. We, don't, we have, for 50 years, we have, been, we have had a stable political atmosphere. No civil war, no fighting. Everyone is coming to us. What so is your secret? 50 years with peace? With peace and stability. So you, you've had twice longer peace period than we, because exactly. we, we have independence since 20 yes. five years? Yes. We got independence, then uh, the first Republican president handed over power to the second Republican president of a different political party. 
we but really different or just one well, political just part, different socialist party uh probably they were uh, they they still had some leftovers from uh, the previous even now you can feel the elements of socialism in our current free market oriented political leaders and it's going to take uh, some time because they they were raised up in uh, the socialist era and the model they have is that of socialism and they are struggling to understand free market but they have made progress we are very happy that we are a free market economy um, and uh, we can see some elements of socialism but at uh, but to, you're moving to the we, right we are moving to the right we are making progress and we are happy our political leaders are not angels they're human beings they can have the same errors like any other human being but they have made progress so because of uh, that socialist influence they are making progress they are understanding but for 50 years we have changed the presidents and uh, from different political parties and the transition the handing over of power has been smooth in other countries that was recipe for civil war but as Zambians we've stayed united and we have never lost not even one life and the, and the people, I think, doesn't know that the war in Africa is in the north part where uh, Christianity met with Islam. Yes. Yes. So yes. there is, I think, very dangerous there. But from Europe, yes. we have clo closest... Uh, to the small, southern region. Yeah, to the southern region. So uh, we are closest, closer uh, to the war than you have in Zambia, I think. Because yes. Because we have war in Ukraine. We ha and yes. To Mali, I isn't. Uh, yes, you are closer to the war torn areas than we are down south. And that's why you see, even when people are talking about Sub Sahara, it's because Sub Sahara Africa is a different story. It's a story of peace, it's a story of progress, unlike the upper side where you still have uh, these, uh, this conflict. So in Zambia, we enjoy peace. Exactly. And two more questions. First, about Botswana. Yes. Because Botswana is some kind of diamond, uh, because th th this is most modern country, I think, yes. in all Africa. Yes. Zimbabwe is the worst, I, I think. Uh, so why, why, why it's happened that Botswana is so rich? and Zambia isn't. Do you, they, you, uh, those countries choose different way to...? Yeah. to po political leadership plays a big role in economic development. And uh, Botswana has had uh, good policies, policies that focused on people. It's, uh, it's our cry. This is it's the most free market oriented uh, country in Africa, so... Yes, yes. Uh, Botswana, for example, has had uh, policies that uh, favored the local people, promoted the local people. Uh, policies are very important. You can have uh, entrepreneurs in the country, but if the policies in that country are bad, entrepreneurship is not enough. Yes, but somebody choose the leaders. So we, why, why this country uh, have, I, I don't know, different oriented, different, uh, um, oriented people? Yeah and others country not? Well, there are two things. Number one, it is the spirit of people coming into power. What is their motive? Is it to plan their resources or to serve people? So you have that question. The electorate has to be very careful whom they are choosing. But unfortunately, there is a lot of uh, ignorance in the electorate. What I do, for example, um, I try to educate the general public to understand what is the right direction for the economy to grow. And I teach uh, to the general public the concept of free market and capitalism and understanding that this is not an evil as uh, the enemies of capitalism have propagated it. And once you have uh, the electorate understanding the free market and its benefits, then they're not going to be deceived by the politicians. They're going to read the mind because every political party has to produce a manifesto to the people. This is our mission, this is our vision, this is how we intend to develop the nation. But if people are informed, they'll be able to tell that this is a socialist manifesto 
oh, this is a free market manifesto, then they're going to choose the right leader. But in the absence of that free market awareness, in the absence of that free market education, people vote those who bribe them, those who give them money. And um, you might have a, a socialist who is popular, but because he has bribed the electorate, it's going to be put in power. So you have, on one hand, a lucky system where leaders are servants, they want to save people. Then you also have uh, another element where the electorate is informed about what system is going to improve our lives. And for me, I've told people, I don't, um, I don't regret, I don't feel ashamed. I'm a capitalist, I'll teach capitalism, I'll teach free market, because there is no any other system that is going to improve our lives yeah. better. Exactly, especially when we met together a few years ago in your, in your house, uh, you, you said that you bring uh, Ludwig von Mises' human action and, and yes. you said something like this is only one example in all Africa. Yes. So uh, how you uh, met with those ideas or how you learn about uh, Austrian School of Economics and Ludwig von Mises? Uh, there are two sides. First of all, as a believer, I say God led me. So, so you come to the Ludwig von Mises through God and through Christianity? Yes, yes. It's a, it's a long channel because um, I was uh, in a school of theology. Then one of my professors uh, told me, asked me, what do you want to do? And I told him, I want to do practical theology in economics. And he told me, oh, I know one organization in America that uh, trends religious leaders in economic understanding. Because my background, my childhood has been business. I've been selling all my life to survive. So he recommended me, and um, I applied to the Acton Institute in America, and they flew me to the Czech Republic for the first time. Oh. That is uh, in 2001. And, and we had a, a seminar there in Tepla, uh, understanding the free market. It was flying on top of my head, some of those concepts, but I was feeling nice in myself. This is freedom. We, I was connecting. And uh, that's how I continued to study. And uh, some of the books they gave me, one of those was um, Human Action, Mises. And I started reading that book because it was uh, economics, in a philosophical way, made simple, practical, real. Exactly. And no one has ever said no to me because what I teach is real life. What I teach is freedom. And everyone finds it, this can take me, uh, can prosper me. Okay, last uh, question because uh, maybe some of our students or lectures or friends uh, w will want go to Africa and, I don't know, maybe open the business, maybe maybe not. He's interested. How uh, you can help uh, him? Well, I'm, I'm willing to help and guide wherever I can. Um, I have done uh, a lot of work now. My Do you know some Poles who have uh, businesses in, in Zambia? I haven't met any, but probably Father Yase could know. I haven't uh, met uh, any. But uh, if anyone is uh, willing to be assisted to work with me as a contact person and helping them setting up uh, the business, I am available. That's all what I'm doing. It's uh, making sure I contribute to the development of my country through education and through practical business. So anyone willing to work with me and to contact me, I am there. I have the theory. I have the, um, anyone willing to come to Africa, I am a contact person, I am available, um, I have the theory, I have the practice, I know the land, I know the connections, I understand the economy, um, I am hard working, I am not a lazy person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we know, we know. So. 
contact with Chansey, our guest from Zambia and our lecture, as bureau lecture in Zambia, because Chansey in Zambia uh, creates the same, uh, he tried to teach entrepreneurs yes. uh, as the, in the same way as we uh, exactly. do in, in Poland. We so have the same mission. Yeah, we have the same mission, but... To kill socialism. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, thank you for interview. Thank you very much. And see you soon. Okay, thank you very much. Bye-bye.